Okay, friends, it's time to really to get the, the meeting started. So sisters and brothers, we will get started with the, you know, the service affair here in the Dollarton West Congregation. We gather, we, we gathered this afternoon on a sad occasion, the death of our dear brother, Brother Locke uh, Williamson Sr. to offer our condolences as well as a source of comfort to the family of Brother Lot William Sr. But before we get, uh, get into that affair, we want to start off by having the congregation to stand and sing song number 139, if they will, please. Song 139, will the congregation please stand? by Brother John Spann, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now then, we have Brother uh, William Knox to deliver us the uh, Bible Discourse Talk, please.
Well, it's good to see the support that is given to the Williamson family. And even though this is a sad occasion, uh, we look forward to doing all that we can to be a source of comfort and of assistance to you, dear friends. Uh, I'm going to read the obituary, and, and, and I just love the way it is written. A temporary farewell to my loving husband and our daddy and granddaddy. And that's what it is. It's just temporary. This is a temporary farewell. Before you know it, he'll be back, and, uh, and you'll have the opportunity of enjoying uh, an endless life with our dear brother, with your family. The obituary reads this way. Lot Williamson Sr. was born in, Jan rather in uh, Darlington, South Carolina, to the late Maggie McKay Williamson and Albertus Williamson Sr. Lot was the eighth of 12 children. He was a very loving husband, daddy, and granddaddy, and a lover of our God, Jehovah. And he leaves behind to cherish his memories, his wife of 64 years, Adele Williamson. Four daughters, Angela Johnson, Ramona Lovejoy, Sandra Graham, and Deborah J. Thames. One son, Lot Williamson Jr., and a daughter-in-law, Rose Williamson. Six grandchildren, Stephen Tyler, Frank Lovejoy, Juniper, Burnett, Justin Tyler, Avery Small, Corey Thames, seven great-grandchildren, Niles, Nolan, and Naya Lovejoy, Brighton and Brilliance Burton, uh, Burnett, sorry, Georgia, Jean, and Corey Thames, Jr. Brothers, Albertus Williamson, Jr., Albert Williamson, and Charles Williamson. Sisters, Maddie Mae Boosie and Elnora Holsey, along with a host of relatives, nieces, nephews, and friends. Six of Lot's siblings have preceded him in death. Hattie Mae, Almeida, Clara Lee, Walter, Leo, and Eddie. Lot was baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in 1962, and his faith and hope had sustained him throughout his many years of health issues, and his belief in the promised resurrection was his anchor for our lives. And it quotes here Hebrews 6, 9, and it ends with, my husband and our daddy and granddaddy will truly be missed by all of us and his relatives and friends. And that is so true. But as the obituary, uh, the, the very heading of it, a temporary farewell. And that's what it is. It's, it's a temporary farewell. And, and as we look uh, at the family, uh, it's, it's good that you all are here. And we're going to do our utmost to be a source of, of comfort to you in this, in this time of, of your bereavement. Uh, the Bible has something to say with respects to, to all of us, uh, and, and it's with the way we live our lives. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, and verse number 1, why not let's just take a look at that together. Ecclesiastes 7, 1. Notice what is said here. It says, a good name is better than good oil, and the day of death is better than the day of birth. Well, as we go through our discussion, we're going to see how that truly does apply to our dear brother, Lot Williamson. The day of death really is magnified uh, in his example of his love for Jehovah, in the example of his love for his family, and his love for the congregation, for our dear brotherhood. And, and so it has been an honor and a privilege to have known him, to have served with him, uh, and, 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 and we look forward to seeing him again in the not too distant future by means of the resurrection that the Bible speaks of. But it's so important that we meet together, especially at this time, because of the bereavement. And as a result, we can give comfort to one another and also to the family. That is, that is, that is, is so needed. 
Uh, grief is a normal reaction uh, to the loss of a loved one. We can't help but. Why? Because we love the individual and, and we know we're going to miss him. And of course, Jesus himself set a very good example with respects to that. Uh, Jesus' good friend Lazarus, remember, the Bible says, died. And uh, Jesus was en route to, uh, to get there. But Lazarus had been dead four days before Jesus arrived. But now notice the response. In the book of John, John chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse number 17 first. And then we're going to read verses 23 through 26. But in John chapter 11, and starting with verse 17, it says, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, now, notice verses 23 through 26. It says this. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who exercises faith in me, even though he dies, will come to life. And everyone who is living and exercises faith in me will never die at all. Do you believe this? We know Martha believed that. And we believe that as well. But the amazing thing here, Jesus says, everyone who is living and exercises faith in me will never die at all. Our dear brother Williamson has died. How is that so? That they will never die at all. His loyal service is permanently ingrained in Jehovah's memory. And to Jehovah, he has not died. As our obituary said, it's just a temporary farewell. It's just temporary. And Jehovah knows that, you see. Because Jehovah has the ability and the desire to bring not only our dear brother Williamson back, but all loyal servants who have died and all of mankind who has not even had the privilege of knowing him. The Bible says they will all come back in a resurrection for those who didn't have the opportunity to know, to be taught. So, of course, no one, no one loses out. And how grateful we are for that. Jehovah has tender affections for individuals who have died. And, and if we open our Bibles to the book of Psalm, the 34th Psalm, and verse number 18, it says here, Jehovah is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. He is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Uh, remember last Sunday's Watchtower, for those of you who are, who are Jehovah's Witnesses, there was a fine article on individuals who have died and the comfort that we can receive from the congregation and from our Heavenly Father Jehovah, from the organization that we're a part of. And, 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 it's, and it's such a great thing. Uh, because in that article, it mentions that Jehovah understands what, what we go through. He's our Heavenly Father. But it says that Jehovah has lost loved ones in death as well. And it mentioned Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, King David. Why, even his firstborn son. So Jehovah knows the pain. And that article brought out a very interesting thing with reference to the pain that Jehovah felt when Jesus died, that it was un indescribable, the pain that he went through. So Jehovah understands what we go through, and that is a comfort to know that one day very soon he's going to bring an end to, to all of this. So, so let's just talk a little bit about our dear brother, about our dear brother Lot. Uh, we'd not like to ask Brother Harvin if, if he would come up, please. We're just going to talk to him just a little bit about Brother Lot. Now, before Brother Harvin even became a part of the congregation, Brother Williamson was here. It was an isolated group back then. It was him and a couple of sisters. Uh, uh, but, but Brother Harvin, could you tell us a little bit about uh, 
your experiences and some of the things that you and Brother Williamson enjoyed together? Well, as you mentioned, Brother Knox, uh, Brother Williamson was with a group before I got here. He was the only brother here aside from Brother Lyde. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a very faithful, loving, loyal brother. From the day I met him, in, it was April in uh, 1968. Never forget the date. When I met him, I could tell he was a nice person with a beautiful personality because he carried that big smile with him. Yep. And we can see that he is very beautiful. And his whole family was because I got a chance to meet them too. They had a nice, loving family. And there was a bond that was formed at that time. And he and I worked together, along with Brother Lai, he was involved too. We worked together to take the lead in the group that was here. And uh, I was asked to come here, particularly for that purpose, to handle the group here. And we had a very, very enjoyable time. So the group got started in January, and would you know, it became a congregation in November of the same year. And more responsibility was given then at that time. And Brother Williams was right there to help me along. As, was, as mentioned in the, in the obituary, his health was rather poor, but he didn't let that stop him. He did what he could. And someone was telling me this morning about his life, how he helped individuals out in any way he could. He helped them out with whatever he could do, even though he had that problem. But uh, I know we will all miss him because he's a loving, fair loving brother, a good friend, and a loving brother as well. And what I liked about Brother Williams, he, had, he was a mature Christian with great wisdom. And he could look at a situation, and we had a few problems that came along, but he was very instrumental in helping make the right decision to please Jehovah. And that's why I loved him so dearly, because I had to lean on someone, and I could lean on his shoulders when that time come. And he was always dependable. And the family as a whole, they were very loving. So we really enjoyed that friendship for at least about five years, really. And then the elder arrangement came along, and that was a different story. We still had a good, close friendship, but now with more responsibility. And there was a weighty, weighty, weighty decision to make. And Brother Lot Williamson and I had to make them at that time because we were both elders. And we made some decisions. Only Jehovah could help us with them. And we had to even rely on the, the uh, organization, too, at that time. When we had a real hard decision to make, he and I talked about it, and then we got the society involved. And they helped us to make a decision that we both realized how important the elder arrangement was in the con congregation. So we love Brother Lot very, very much, and he'll be missed. There's no doubt about that. I remember one, th one thing he <laughs> mentioned to me. It was kind of funny, like, about a teaching in the Bible. It was about Christmas. And he told me that during his study, the individual that was studying with him uh, had to handle a problem with them at a, at, a, at a date that was not before Christmas, after Christmas. So what he said was, he was studying, and so when Christmas came along, he bought the beautiful gifts and everything for his family, and then the brother who was studying with him didn't tell him anything about, about the matter. So after Christmas came and gone, then the conversation came up in their study. And so, so the brother, uh, he asked the brother about it. And the brother take the Bible, show him that Christmas was not a supported holiday by the Bible. And he looked at the brother and said, now, why didn't you tell me that? before I spent all my money buying these gifts, <laughs> and now you tell me. We had to laugh very hard about that. But he has a, side of, a good side of humor about him, yes. too. So we love him for that, Brother Knox. Yeah. And we're going to look for, yes, from the Bible standpoint, he will not be gone long. He just like on a little trip, he'll be back soon. And so we realize that, because the Bible speaks of a resurrection, and Jehovah going to re resurrect the last one, go down, he going to resurrect them first, and go walk all the way down the line. So we have a lot of confidence in that provision. So he, he's passed on, he'll be back. But the question is, 
where will we be? Will we be, will we be here to welcome him back? That depends on us and how we decide to serve our God, Jehovah. Thank you so much, Brother Harmon. Greatly appreciate that. Brother Williamson, as Brother Harmon said, uh, served loyally for many years. And, and you know, for, for, for those of us who were a part of that early congregation, remember the congregation on Whipple Street, a little shotgun building? You know, you'd come in down the hall and you turn around and the stage was right there and they only had one step coming up. Well, uh, the, 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 the kids shared an experience that they had with, uh, with, with one of our sister Williamson's sisters. Our Aunt Louise came from Brooklyn to visit. And, uh, and, and it was meeting night, and, you know, they weren't going to miss their meeting. So Aunt Louise said, well, yeah, I'll go with you. So they invited her, and so she went. Well, you know, from the trip and everything, you know, she was kind of tired. And, but, and as the meeting went on, you know, Aunt Louise would kind of drift off and doze off a little bit, you know, and then wake back up and doze off and wake up. Well, br Brother uh, Williamson had a part on the program, and uh, he was depicting the, the, the Bible character Moses. And he had this big blanket on, you know, over his head. And he had his staff. And he was into, you know, enacting his part out. And Aunt Louise had dozed off before he started. Well, he's in the part of enacting the part out. And then she woke up. Ah! <laughs> Shocked her half to death. <laughs> the kid said, well, Aunt Louise didn't doze off anymore that night. <laughs> so that was, you know. So, we, but Brother Williamson took every assignment to heart, and he did his very best. He not only told them about Moses, he enacted it. And as a result, you know, all of the family benefited. The kids said uh, it was kind of hard to hold themselves together to keep their composure, you know, not make Auntie feel bad. But after they got home, they had a real good laugh over that. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, when, when, we, when we look at, at, uh, at life, we see that uh, Jehovah God created us to live. When Jehovah created Adam and Eve, Jehovah had nothing like this in mind. The Bible helps us to, to see that. The Bible says that Jehovah has four attributes that really stand out. His love, justice, wisdom, and kindness. And, and, but the, the greatest of these, the Bible says, is love. Jehovah's power is there, his justice. But the greatest of all of this is, of course, love. And, 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 and the Bible helps us to see why it is we die. What's that strand that causes us to die? Well, in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, in verse number 7, it tells us, it says, And Jehovah God went on to form the man out of the dust of the ground, and to blow into his nostrils the breath of life, and... The man became a living person. Now, we realize that. That is so true. But now, notice why we die. In verses 15 through 17, it says, And Jehovah God took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to care for it. Jehovah God also gave this command to the man, From every tree of the garden you may eat to satisfaction, but as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. There you go. That's why we die. If Adam and Eve had never touched that tree, they would have been alive to this day. And instead of the earth being filled with imperfect, dying, sick, crippled people, the earth would have been filled with perfect people. That's Jehovah God's purpose. That has never changed. That has never changed. And according to what the Bible says, that same purpose will be carried out. This is what our dear brother, Lot Williamson, believed. Very quiet spoken, but his heart, his desire to serve Jehovah was true. And his family, first and foremost, saw that. And, and as a result, they're still serving Jehovah. And that's a fine testimony uh, to the teaching that was rendered. And, and so when we look at it in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12, what Adam and Eve had, they passed on to us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 says this. That is why... 
just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin. And so death spread to all men. Why? Because they had all sinned. How many of us do baking? Have you ever baked anything in a pan that had a dent in it? No matter what you bake in that pan, every time you turn it upside down and empty it, what's going to happen? There's going to be an indention there, isn't it? And so if it's a cake or a pie, whatever, you put icing over that and kind of cover it up. And no, nobody knows but you. But you see, we're all dented because of Adam. And the only person that can straighten that out is our Heavenly Father, Jehovah. And he has made provisions to do that. And very soon, we will reap the true benefits of serving Jehovah. And in the book of Isaiah, it speaks of that. Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 10 and 11. Notice what Jehovah says. For just as the rain and the snow pour down from heaven and do not return there unless they saturate the earth and make it produce and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so my word that goes forth from my mouth will be, it will not return to me without results. It will certainly accomplish whatever is my delight. It will have sure success in what I send it to do. So here Jehovah gives his guarantee. That original purpose in Eden for the earth to be a paradise, that word went forth from his mouth. It's not going to return to him without results. So mankind, the Bible says, through taking in knowledge of our Heavenly Father, well, let's just, let's just look at it. John chapter 17 and verse number 3. Here is how we can have the opportunity of living forever. John 17, 3 says, This means everlasting life. The same life that he promised to Adam and Eve if they were obedient is the same life he promises to all of us. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God. And of the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. So we have to come to know the true God, Jehovah, and his son in order to qualify to gain life. This is what Brother Williamson believed. He lived his entire life talking to others about Jehovah. And of course serving Jehovah in a way that's pleasing. And as a result, uh, we look forward to seeing him again in the not too distant future. In his study of the Bible, he learned a lot of things with respect to Jehovah, and we'd like to share some of them with you. For instance, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 18, in verse number 4, he learned this with respect to the soul. Ezekiel 18, in verse 4, it says, Look, all souls, to me they belong. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son. To me they belong. The soul that sins is the one who will die. And we're all born in sin, aren't we? And so, had not been for Jehovah God and his son Christ, we would have a pretty bleak future, death. That would be all that, that we would have to look forward to. But, uh, but, 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 but notice verses 20 through 22 in Ezekiel chapter 18. It says, the soul who sins is the one who will die. A son will bear no guilt because of the error of his father, and a father will bear no guilt because of the error of his son. The righteousness of the righteous one will be accounted to him alone, and the wickedness of the wicked one will be accounted to him alone. But now notice this in verse 21. Now if someone wicked turns away from all his sins he has committed and keeps my statutes, and does what is just and righteous, he will certainly keep living. He will not die. Isn't that something? And verse number 22, none of the transgressions that he has committed will be held against him. He will keep living for doing what is righteous. Yes. And so, an individual can come to a knowledge of Jehovah, learn what his purposes is, 
fall in line with that and all that he has done, Jehovah says he, he wipes it clean. He gives the individual an opportunity to live forever. Brother Williamson believed that. And he helped individuals to come to know Jehovah as a result of it. And, 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 and so when we, when we look at, at where we are in the stream of time, we can truly say that our Heavenly Father Jehovah is indeed a God of love. Now, what condition is he? Is he somewhere suffering now? Notice what the Bible says with respect to that. In the 146th Psalm, is he in any pain? The 146th Psalm in verse number 4. It says this. His spirit goes out. He returns to the ground. On that very day, his thoughts perish. You see? He's asleep. Have you ever had a movie that you wanted to watch? Or maybe a football game, now that football season is in. And you've worked all day and you're kind of tired. And the game is coming on and you've got your popcorn and your peanuts and everything. And during a commercial you may yawn a little bit and fall asleep. And you wake up and it's the third quarter and you go like, man, what happened? You know, you call your buddy up and say, hey, what, what happened? What happened? You know, in the second quarter and, 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 and in the first half and they'll bring you up to date. Well, you fell asleep. Well, that's what death is. It's asleep. During that sleep period, you have no knowledge of what's going on around you. And so when Brother Williamson comes back, he's going to be looking to you guys to catch him up with what he missed. Isn't that something? And so, of course, we look, we look forward to uh, doing that and, 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 and of course, sharing uh, in the future. And the Bible speaks of a very, very bright future with reference to the world of mankind. As a matter of fact, we're in the book of Psalm. Let's look at the 37th Psalm. Psalm 37, notice what the Bible says. And this is what our dear brother Williamson believed in. And of course, he helped others to, to come to see and to appreciate this. These are some of the things that really attracted my dad to the Bible and to Jehovah's Witnesses back in the early 60s as well. In, in uh, the 37th Psalm, and starting with verse number, number 9, it says, For evil men will be done away with. But those hoping in Jehovah will possess the earth. See that? For just a little while longer, and the wicked will be no more. You will look at where they were, and they will not be there. Can you imagine walking the length and breadth of this earth and not finding any wicked persons? That's what the Bible says. I had an opportunity of talking to an individual once about living forever on the paradise earth. And he said, well, Knox, no, I don't, I don't think I would want to. And I said, well, why? He says, well, for one thing, <laughs> people are so wicked. He said, they're so bad. He said, live forever in this? He said, nah, nah, I, I just couldn't handle it. But what if all of this were gone? And those who were alive qualified because they followed what the Bible said. It's an entirely different thing. Now notice this in verse 11. The meek will possess the earth. And they will find exquisite delight in the abundance of peace because everyone will be taught by Jehovah. And in verse number 29, the righteous will possess the earth and they will live forever upon it. Forever. That's what our dear brother Williamson believed. The righteous will live forever on this earth. And, and since we're in the book of Psalm, let's look at the 115th Psalm. In verse number 16, notice why the earth is such a special place for us. The 115th Psalm in verse number 16. It says this, as for the heavens, they belong to Jehovah, but the earth, you see that, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. This is our home. This is where Jehovah intends for us to live. The earth is our home. And of course, he spared no expense with regard to preparing it for mankind. Adam and Eve were disobedient. They lost out. But their offspring have the opportunity of gaining what they lost. And that's a paradise right here 
on the earth. And of course, that's what the Bible speaks of. And, 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 and this teaching is something that our dear brother Williamson believed. And he inculcated that within his family. And from the time they were small, they were brought up in the sayings of Jehovah. And you know, as they say, foolishness is tied up in the heart of a boy. Ask Lot. He'll he tell you. So many times, Brother Williamson had to correct him. And that guy was fast on his feet. Brother Williamson would get out that switch to beat him, and boy, he <laughs> him and Lot they, <laughs> through the house. He finally catch up with him, but boy, Lot was fast on his feet. And for a while, he escaped those beatings, you know. But the amazing thing is, rather than running from his dad, can you see him in God's new system running to his dad to embrace him? Yes, because he has come back in the resurrection. Now, now, now this feeling is something that Brother Williamson instilled within his family. And, and I would just like to, to share this with you. It's entitled, Our Daddy and Granddaddy. It says this, we the children wanted to briefly express ourselves about our daddy. Daddy was a loving provider to our mom and us, a very kind and tender man who played with his children. Even though he was the silent type, he spoke volumes by his example. Daddy's love for his family was shown in so many ways, along with his love for Jehovah. Daddy was a spiritual man. For example, in the late 60s, when Darlington was just an isolated group, Daddy was instrumental in leading the group, which later became a congregation. Daddy would lead the sisters in the caravan to the assemblies, not leaving one sheep behind. Those caravan rides were the best. As a kid, we went through them too. Boy, I'm telling you, boy, we really enjoyed those. Daddy had a pretty good sense of humor. And it says humor with a lesson like this, what we call daddyisms. These are them, some of them. You will meet it down the road. You know, kids act up, you heard that one? Keep going, you meet it. It's going to come back on you. Yeah, okay. All shut eyes ain't sleep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What is a good head if you don't use it? Amen. Isn't that something? Yes. And these things are so true. If we had an issue, he always said, just leave it in Jehovah's hands. And the kid said, even though at times it was hard for us to do. We will miss daddy's beautiful singing voice, along with his crazy songs he made up, which he sung and whistled around the house. This guy was an artist. He make up songs and whistle them and sing them. And the kids learned those songs. Wasn't that, isn't, isn't that good? Daddy also had the knack of coming up with nicknames for some family members that stuck, and they wore those nicknames proudly throughout their lives. That is so true. Besides our children, little children who didn't even know our daddy were drawn to and felt comfortable with him. As his health deteriorated, every morning when our brother Lot would say, it's good, our daddy would say, to be alive. Our brother would say, thanks to, our daddy would say, Jehovah. Daddy never forgot Jehovah and was thankful to Jehovah for allowing him to not only see his children grow up, but his grandchildren grow up, and even his great-grandchildren. We love and miss him, and that is so true. But isn't it a blessing to know it's just temporary? Yes. Now the grandkids. We the grandchildren would like to briefly express ourselves. Granddaddy was the best granddaddy you could ever want. Isn't that something? He was very kind. But he always carried a big switch when we got out of line. But we also saw his playful side. Just like he chased Lot Jr. with that switch. He didn't play. Quiet man, but he meant business, you see. So, so that, was, that was so good. 
His crazy made up songs made us laugh because we knew that he was always there for us. According to our moms, from time to time, uh, when we were born, granddaddy would lay us in his chest, demonstrating a beautiful act of love, and our moms knew we felt safe with him. Granddaddy taught us well by his example, and we will always love him and cherish his memories. Uh, when Lot Jr. was born, you know, four girls, he's the baby and he's the boy. And so all those girls, man, they're just fighting over him. I want to hold him. I want to hold him. I want. And then when the father finally gets home, they said every night for more than a year, Lot Jr. would be on his chest and he would sleep there all night. Now, now, that's a cherished thing. He loved his girls, but this was his first son, you know. You know, in the womb, he heard his mother's heartbeat. But now, for over a year, as he laid there, he could hear his father's heartbeat. What a connection. What a connection, you see. So there, there, there is no doubt that he loved his family. There's no doubt that he loved Jehovah. There's no doubt that he loved life. And, of course, according to what the Bible says, Jehovah will restore him. And it says here, we look forward to the time when Jehovah will bring daddy and granddaddy back to us in restored health, along with his kindness and his beautiful self. We are totally convinced that Jehovah will mend our broken hearts, change our tears of sorrow into tears of overflowing joy, and fill up this big empty hole that has left in our lives when we will see our daddy and granddaddy again. And so dear friends really feel that big empty hole that you feel, Jehovah feels it too. And he's going to fill that void. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And so right now he's just resting and soon he will hear the voice of Christ and, and he'll come back. But when he comes back, what do you think he's going to be looking for? Okay, you got it. That's it. So, as Brother Span brought out in the prayer and Brother Harvin in his part, let's not disappoint him. The scripture says, take in knowledge of Almighty God. See what he requires and fall in line with it so that when Brother Williamson comes back, he will be able to welcome his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and maybe some more. And so we look forward to the future. Death has a sting, but the, 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 the future prospect that the Bible has takes the sting of death away and how grateful we are for, for that. The Bible truly helps us to see that there is a beautiful future in store for us. The family would like for you to know this before we conclude. The family would like to take this time to deeply thank you for any part that you have played during this very sad and trying time in our lives, whether through your prayers, moral support, or your thoughts. We appreciate all of it very much. The family will be open to visitors at the house located on 448 Pineville Road, Darlington, South Carolina, if you would like to come by. And so please feel free to do that. We're going to conclude with a word, uh, with a, a song, and then afterward it will be my privilege to offer a word of prayer to Jehovah. And the song that we will conclude with is uh, entitled, See Yourself When All Is New. No, no, Life Without End At Last. Yeah, Life Without End At Last. <laughs> 